Hash has the village of Dracod in the remote village of Dracod, nestled deep in the dense woods of the Carpathian Mountains, life followed a tranquil rhythm. The villagers led simple lives, and touched by the chaos of the modern world. They rose with the sun, tended to their crops, and shared stories by the firelight. One chilly autumn evening, as the full moon hung low in the sky, a chilling howl echoed through the forest, sending a shiver down the spine of every villager. The elders exchanged uneasy glances, whispering of old legends, but most dismissed it as the call of a distant wolf. In the heart of Dracot lived Eliza, a young woman with a kind heart and a curious mind. She was known for her bravery and her tendency to wander the forest, seeking herbs and exploring its hidden corners. That night, she had stayed out longer than usual, gathering the last of the season's blooms. As she made her way home, Eliza felt a strange presence. The air grew colder, and the forest, usually so familiar, seemed alien and foreboding. She quickened her pace, her heart pounding. Just as she reached the edge of the village, she caught a glimpse of a shadowy figure lurking among the trees. The figure's eyes glowed with an unnatural light, and a low growl rumbled through the air. Eliza hurried inside, bolting her door and drawing the curtains. She told no one of what she had seen, fearing they would dismiss her fears as mere imaginings. The following days were marked by unease. Livestock began to disappear, and strange tracks were found in the mud, too large and too deep to belong to any known animal. The villagers grew more and more anxious, locking their doors at night and keeping their children close. One evening, the village council gathered to discuss the strange occurrences. Old man Gregor, the village elder, spoke of the ancient curse of the werewolf, a creature that could blend in with humans by day and transform into a monstrous beast by night. Few took his tales seriously, but the fear in his eyes was undeniable. As the full moon approached once more, the tension in Draycott reached a fever pitch. That night, a blood-curdling howl shattered the silence, and chaos erupted. Shadows moved swiftly through the village, and the air was filled with the scent of blood and fear. Eliza, armed with a silver dagger, ventured into the night, determined to confront the beast. She moved silently, her senses heightened. As she reached the forest's edge, she saw it a massive wolf-like creature with eyes that burned like embers. The beast turned, and for a moment, their eyes locked. In that instant, Eliza recognized something disturbingly familiar in those eyes. The creature lunged, and Eliza barely managed to dodge its attack. She struck out with her dagger, and the silver blade sliced through the air, grazing the beast's flank. With a pained howl, the creature fled into the darkness, leaving Eliza standing there, breathless and shaken. The next morning, the villagers found her by the forest, her clothes torn and her face pale but determined. She said nothing of the encounter, only that the beast had been wounded and might not return. Yet, as she walked back to her home, she couldn't shake the feeling that the danger was far from over. In the days that followed, life in Dracut slowly returned to normal. But Eliza knew that the peace was fragile. She had seen the truth in the creature's eyes, a truth that hinted at a darker secret hidden within the village itself. And as the next full moon approached, she prepared herself, knowing that the hunt was far from over and that the werewolf could be anyone she knew, lurking just beneath the surface, waiting for the right moment to strike again. Hash has the village of Dracot continued as days turned into weeks. Dracot seemed to lull itself into a false sense of security. The livestock losses ceased, and no more strange tracks were found. But Eliza remained vigilant. Every night, she stood by her window, watching the forest and listening for the telltale howl that haunted her dreams. One evening, as Eliza was about to retire to bed, there was a knock on her door. It was Isaac the village blacksmith, a burly man with a kind heart and a rough demeanor. He seemed agitated, glancing over his shoulder as if expecting someone to follow him. Eliza, he whispered urgently, we need to talk. It's about the werewolf. Her heart skipped a beat. What do you know? Not here, he insisted. Meet me at the old mill, an hour before dawn. Eliza nodded, and Isaac slipped away into the night. She hardly slept her mind racing with possibilities. When the time came, she wrapped herself in a cloak and quietly made her way to the mill, 
the air crisp and the village silent. The old mill stood at the edge of the forest, abandoned and decaying. Isaac was waiting inside, a lantern casting flickering shadows on the walls. He looked relieved to see her. There's something you need to know, he began. My grandfather used to speak of a pact made long ago, a dark bargain to protect the village. He said the bloodline of the werewolf runs through Draycott itself. Eliza's eyes widened. You mean one of us could be? Isaac nodded gravely. The curse is inherited, lying dormant until the right conditions awaken it. The full moon, a surge of anger or fear it could trigger the transformation. Do you know who it is? Eliza asked, her voice trembling. Isaac shook his head. No, but I found something that might help. He handed her an old, leather-bound journal. It belonged to my grandfather. He wrote about the signs, the symptoms. Maybe it can help us identify the werewolf before it strikes again. Eliza took the journal, her fingers brushing over the worn cover. Thank you, Isaac. We need to be careful. If anyone finds out what we're doing. I know, he said. We'll keep it between us. Over the next few days, Eliza poured over the journal, looking for clues. It described subtle changes the way the afflicted would react to silver, their heightened senses, and their unusual strength. As she read, a nagging suspicion grew in her mind, pointing her toward someone she would never have suspected. One evening, she decided to test her theory. She invited some villagers over for dinner, including Margaret, the kindly widow who lived next door. As they chatted and laughed, Eliza observed Margaret closely. She noticed how Margaret's hand trembled when she touched the silverware, and how her eyes seemed to dart nervously whenever the conversation turned to the recent attacks. After the guests left, Eliza felt a mix of dread and determination. If Margaret was the werewolf, she needed to act before the next full moon. But she couldn't confront her alone, she needed proof and allies. Eliza and Isaac hatched a plan. On the night of the next full moon, they would secretly watch Margaret, hoping to catch her transformation. If they were wrong, they would have to start their search anew, but if they were right, they could finally end the curse. As the moon rose high and bathed the village in its pale light, Eliza and Isaac hid in the shadows near Margaret's house. The minutes dragged on, each one feeling like an eternity. Just as they were beginning to doubt themselves, a blood-chilling howl pierced the night. From the corner of her eye, Eliza saw movement. Margaret stepped out into the moonlight, her body trembling. Then, to Eliza's horror, Margaret's form began to twist and contort, fur sprouting from her skin, her eyes glowing with a feral light. Isaac's grip tightened on the silver dagger he held, but Eliza placed a hand on his arm. Wait, she whispered, let's follow her. The transformed Margaret moved swiftly into the forest, and Eliza and Isaac trailed behind, careful to stay out of sight. They watched as the werewolf approached a clearing where a group of figures awaited. Eliza's heart sank as she recognized the mother villagers, their eyes glowing in the moonlight. The realization hit her like a blow. Margaret wasn't the only one, there were more, and they had gathered, perhaps for a hunt. The scale of the curse was greater than they had imagined. As Eliza and Isaac retreated silently, they knew their task had become far more dangerous. The werewolf threat was not just a single beast but a hidden pack within their midst. They had to uncover who else was part of this dark secret and find a way to protect Draycott from the looming danger. Back in the safety of her home, Eliza's resolve hardened. The fight was far from over, and the true battle was just beginning. She and Isaac would need to uncover the identities of the other werewolves and find a way to break the curse that bound them to the village. The full moon hung heavy in the sky, a constant reminder of the darkness that lurked within Draycott, waiting for its moment to strike again. Hash hash the village of Draycott continued Eliza and Isaac spent the following days in a state of heightened vigilance, silently gathering clues and watching for signs among the villagers. The old journal became their guide, offering cryptic hints about the nature of the curse and its grip on Draycott. The knowledge that the werewolf pack could be anyone they knew, hidden behind familiar faces, not at them. Eliza's suspicions grew as she observed the villagers. Little details, unnoticed before, now seemed like glaring warnings. There was Thomas, the quiet baker who had become increasingly reclusive, and Clara, 
the school teacher whose sudden bursts of anger seemed out of character. The list of potential werewolves grew, each name adding to the web of intrigue and fear. One night, as Eliza studied the journal by candlelight, she found a passage that caught her breath. It spoke of a secret ritual, a ceremony that could reveal the true nature of those cursed. The ritual required a rare herb that grew deep in the forest and had to be performed under the light of the full moon. Eliza knew she had to act quickly. The next full moon was only days away. She shared her discovery with Isaac, who agreed to accompany her into the forest to find the herb. They decided to leave at dawn, hoping to return before anyone noticed their absence. The journey into the heart of the forest was treacherous. The dense foliage and uneven terrain made progress slow and difficult. As they ventured deeper, the air grew colder, and an eerie silence enveloped them. Eliza kept her eyes peeled for the herb, a blue-flowered plant described in the journal. After hours of searching, they finally found a patch of the herb growing near a rocky outcrop. Eliza carefully gathered the plants, feeling a mix of relief and apprehension. They started back toward the village, the weight of their mission heavy on their shoulders. As they neared Dracot, the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the path. The village was unusually quiet, an unsettling calm before the storm. Eliza and Isaac retreated to her home, where they prepared for the ritual. That night, under the full moon's glow, they gathered in a secluded clearing just outside the village. Eliza arranged the herbs in a circle and lit a small fire in the center. Isaac read aloud from the journal, chanting the ancient words that would invoke the ritual's power. As the flames flickered and the chant echoed through the night, a strange energy filled the air. The herbs began to emit a soft, blue light, and the fire's glow intensified. Suddenly, a figure emerged from the shadows. It was Clara, her eyes wide with fear and confusion. What are you doing? She demanded. Eliza and Isaac exchanged a glance. We're trying to break the curse, Eliza said calmly. We believe you're part of it. Clara's expression shifted from fear to anger. You don't know what you're meddling with, she hissed. You could doom us all. Before Eliza could respond, Clara lunged at her, but Isaac intervened, holding her back. The ritual's energy surged, and Clara's body convulsed. Her eyes glowed with a feral light, and her form began to change. Eliza watched in horror as Clara transformed into a werewolf before their eyes. The creature snarled and thrashed, but the circle of herbs held it in place. The ritual was working, revealing Clara's true nature. Suddenly, the bushes rustled, and more figures emerged other villagers, their eyes glowing. The pack had come. Eliza and Isaac were surrounded, outnumbered and outmatched. The werewolves circled them, growling and snarling, their eyes filled with the predatory hunger. Just as all seemed lost, a voice rang out from the darkness. Enough. Old man Gregor stepped into the clearing, his presence commanding respect even among the werewolves. This has gone on long enough, he said. The curse must be broken. Eliza and Isaac stared in shock as Gregor approached the circle. He held up a pendant, a silver valve's head, and began to chant in a language neither of them understood. The werewolves howled in agony as the pendant's light grew brighter, illuminating the clearing. The transformation reversed, and the werewolves reverted to their human forms, collapsing to the ground, exhausted and confused. Gregor turned to Eliza and Isaac, his eyes filled with sorrow. The curse was my doing, he confessed. I sought to protect this village, but I only brought suffering. Eliza stepped forward, her voice firm but gentle. We can end this together, tell us how. Gregor nodded and handed her the pendant. This holds the key. Use it to perform the final ritual. Only then will the curse be lifted. As the first light of dawn broke, Eliza and Isaac prepared for the final ritual, knowing that the fate of Dracod rested in their hands. The villagers, now aware of their dark secret, watched in silence, their hope rekindled. The full moon had set, but the true battle was just beginning. Eliza felt the weight of their task, but she also felt a renewed sense of purpose. Together, they would face the darkness and strive to bring an end to the curse that had haunted Dracot for generations. As Eliza and Isaac began the ritual, the villagers gathered around, their eyes reflecting a mix of fear and hope. The pendant glowed with an otherworldly light, 
and the air hummed with energy. They knew the path ahead was fraught with danger and uncertainty, but they also knew that, united, they had the strength to overcome it. The final chapter of Draycott's curse had begun, and its conclusion remained shrouded in mystery. The villagers braced themselves for what lay ahead, their hearts filled with determination. The curse may have bound them together in darkness, but it also gave them the resolve to fight for their future. And as the first rays of the sun pierced through the forest canopy, Eliza knew that their journey was far from over. The true battle had just begun, and the outcome would determine the fate of Draycott forever. Hash has the village of Draycott conclusion as the villagers watched with bated breath. Eliza and Isaac stood at the center of the clearing, the pendant glowing with a brilliant light. Old man Gregor's words echoed in their minds, reminding them that unity and resolve were their greatest weapons against the curse. Eliza began the final ritual, chanting the ancient words Gregor had taught her. The pendant's light intensified, casting long shadows and illuminating the faces of the villagers. Isaac held the journal, guiding Eliza through each step with steady precision. The ground beneath them began to tremble, and a low hum filled the air. The energy from the pendant spread out in waves, touching each villager and filling them with warmth. The werewolves, now in their human forms, watched in awe as the curse that had bound them for generations began to unravel. Eliza felt a surge of power flow through her, connecting her to the very essence of the village. She closed her eyes and focused on the pendant, willing it to release the dark energy that had plagued Draycott. The light grew brighter, and the trembling intensified until it felt like the very earth was shifting beneath them. Suddenly, a blinding flash erupted from the pendant, and a wave of pure energy washed over the clearing. The villagers shielded their eyes, and when the light faded, a profound silence settled over them. Eliza opened her eyes, and the first thing she noticed was the sense of calm that enveloped the clearing. The air was no longer heavy with the weight of the curse. She looked around and saw the villagers, their faces reflecting a mix of relief and wonder. The transformation had ended, and the curse was lifted. Old man Gregor stepped forward, tears streaming down his face. You did it, he whispered, his voice trembling with emotion. The curse is broken. The villagers erupted in cheers, embracing one another and shedding tears of joy. The weight that had hung over Draycott for generations was finally lifted. Families were reunited, and the fear that had divided them was replaced with a newfound sense of unity. Isaac hugged Eliza, his relief evident in his eyes. We did it, he said, his voice filled with gratitude. We saved the village. Eliza smiled, feeling a deep sense of accomplishment. She looked around at the villagers, knowing that their journey had not only freed them from the curse but had also brought them closer together. The bond forged in the face of darkness would strengthen them for years to come. In the days that followed, Draycott began to heal. The villagers worked together to rebuild what had been lost and to create a future free from the shadows of the past. Eliza and Isaac were hailed as heroes, their bravery and determination celebrated by all. Old man Gregor, now freed from the guilt that had haunted him, became a beloved elder, guiding the village with wisdom and compassion. He shared stories of the past, ensuring that the lessons learned would not be forgotten. As the seasons changed, the village of Draycott flourished. The forest, once a place of fear, became a source of life and beauty. The villagers embraced their new beginning, cherishing each moment and the bonds that had been strengthened through their ordeal. Eliza continued to explore the forest, but now her journeys were filled with wonder rather than fear. She discovered new herbs and plants, sharing her knowledge with the villagers and helping to create a thriving community. Isaac, too, found new purpose in his work. As the village blacksmith, he crafted tools and weapons that would protect Draycott for generations to come. His bond with Eliza deepened, their shared experience forging a connection that would endure. And so, the village of Draycott found peace. The curse that had once cast a shadow over their lives was now a distant memory, a reminder of their resilience and the power of unity. The villagers looked to the future with hope, knowing that they had overcome the darkness and emerged stronger than ever. As the sun set over the forest, casting a golden glow over the village, Eliza stood at the edge of the clearing, 
watching the children play and the families gather, she felt a deep sense of contentment, knowing that the journey they had undertaken had led to a new beginning. In that moment, she knew that the village of Dracot was no longer a place defined by its past but by the strength and love of its people. And with that knowledge, she looked to the future with a heart full of hope and a spirit ready to embrace whatever came next.